Yeah, uh, Till, great to be on stage with you. Um, we were a seed stage investor in Idagio. Um, so what happens actually really rarely that we make a seed stage investment, but uh, when we met you and Christoph, uh, the team, we were really convinced four years ago. And um, obviously, Idagio is a big brand name in the classical music world now, but not everybody might know what the service is about. Maybe you can talk a bit about the platform and your achievements to date. Yeah, so in a nutshell, um, Adagio turns every mobile phone um, into the ultimate classical music collection. Or you could also say we are kind of Spotify for classical music. So users get on Adagio the entire classical music that humanity has ever recorded, which is in numbers 2.2 million tracks. That's all. That we have licensed with all labels worldwide, all the majors, Universal, Sony, Warner, all independent labels, broadcasters, and also direct licensing deals with, um, uh, with orchestras. So um, we have currently, um, after one and a half year, 1.5 million downloads of our app. We have paying users in 180 countries. So to summarize all that, you could um, probably say we are probably the first vertical in the global entertainment niche. Um, and yes, people perceive Idajo as, as a classical music streaming service. Our users are using Idajo as a streaming service. And we are also growing in this vertical that we just heard about, um, like a streaming service. However, the real thing is still hidden. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we all agree that uh, music streaming is a future. And we saw also in the presentation from, from Deza beforehand the phenomenal growth numbers for music streaming in total. Um, yet the established players have so far failed to, to offer something compelling, a compelling product for classical music. Why do you think this is, and um, what has Idagio done differently? Classical music is different. So the old genre streaming services, they are pop-driven. And in pop, you have, in pop, you need three criteria to structure uh, your, your uh, library. You have the song, you have the artist, and you have the album, period. That's all. In classical music, you have a composer, you have his piece, you have uh, four movements or three movements of the piece, a conductor, orchestra, soloist. So um, this is totally different. You could describe classical music as a system of cover versions. Mm -hmm. So you have one Beethoven Symphony number no. five, but you have hundreds and hundreds of recordings. Um, and the same applies to every piece in classical music. So this is something that leads on the usual streaming services to bad user experiences. So you cannot really find what you search for. Um, the recommendation is irrelevant because there is no curation at all, because the data isn't enabling that. And from an artist's perspective, um, I am not retrievable. Mm -hmm. And as a former artist manager, this is something that was very important to me, because um, the streaming landscape, as it looks, without a specialization for classical musicians, is a kind of existential threat to musicians. Wow. So, and we have built a data model that can handle that. Um, we are having a team, in addition to our developers, a team of 40 musicologists. Um, they are kind of refining. So what, what AMG is doing with Mercedes is what we are doing with the data that we get from the labels. So they go uh, really to every track and uh, uh, connect it with our data model. And that leads to user experiences um, that um, got us so far more than 17,000 reviews. On the App Store, it's 4.7 out of 5 stars, so users really love us. And from an artist's perspective, it means that my entire recording profile is visible. So uh, if you take, we are in Berlin here, if you take, for, for example, the Berlin Philharmonic, you get the entire recording profile starting from Furtwängler, Vaya Karajan, Abado, Rettel, Petrenko, the new music director. We are the only platform that has all these profiles for all the orchestras. And that applies to all of them. And that's the difference between Idajo and uh, the uh, mainstream services. And, and you already touched on it as well um, uh, briefly. We, when we looked at the investment initially, we always thought, OK, this has to be bigger than just uh, a mere streaming service. This is a platform for classical music. Um, can you talk a bit about the vision of this, of this platform for classical music and why classical music itself um, is, is very well suited for, be, for being something bigger than just a mere streaming service. Yeah. I mean, if you would ask me what is the one learning I took from my more than 20 years as an artist manager, and I didn't have the idea to, to become a startup founder in my mid-40s, but um, looking at this market from a global perspective, there is one 
thing, and this is this magic artist-fan relationship. So what does it mean? If you, uh, if you talk to someone like Barenboim, Barenboim, he wants a car after, after his performance that would drive him to the next performance. If you ask uh, anne Sophie Mutter, one of the greatest violinists, are you available for a concert in 2020? She would tell you, no, I'm booked until 21. Uh, ask me again for 22. Uh, they're conductors who simply want uh, to conduct if they know they get the biggest fee. So what is that? At the very end, it's all different currencies for the same thing. Artists need recognition. They are dying for recognition. They are working hard all their lives. 99% of people learning classic music never ever make a career, so they really work, work uh, very hard. And on the other side, you have the audiences, the fans. And fans want stories. They want to know uh, who are these people that are able to fascinate me. And uh, if I want to know, I'm new to classic music, what is the Russian opera I need to hear before I die? I want probably Anna Nitrepko mm. to tell me that. So, and this is a kind of the description of the DNA of a market which I think is tailor-made for the, for the network effect. Mm. And, um, you ask how we are doing this. Um, so far, I said um, Adagio is a kind of Spotify for classical music. So this part is there. That means global distribution, the entire classical music on any mobile phone in 180 countries, which is distribution. And the next step is promotion. And promotion is a very interesting thing, because our question uh, we, we have to answer is, why should people listen to classical? that they could theoretically also get on other platforms, maybe not in such a good usability, and so on. Um, and a further answer to that is um, original content. But not original content in analogy, for example, to Netflix, where you would say, well, we, 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 we would then produce another Beethoven symphony. The world doesn't need it. Nobody would say, well, this is the 261st recording of Beethoven symphony number no. seven. Now I'm going to subscribe and to, to convert into paying, paying sub. It's not going to happen. But it's curation, it's recommendation. So give artists the power over the profiles we have built. So we work there with Zubin Mehta, with the Vienna Philharmonic, Berlin Philharmonic. And this is a kind of, of model that we are initiating now. Right. So certainly, I mean, the, the last four years have been uh, very exciting, working together with Idajo. And I think um, yeah, over 1.5 million downloads, um, I think actually alone in the, in the last 18 months, right. uh, is, is certainly an impressive milestone. Um, what can we expect from Idagio going forward? What are your future plans and um, the current yeah, hot, exciting things you're working on? Now, what I, what I just said is currently it looks like a, stream, a streaming platform. But if you talk to managers uh, in the industry, if you talk to musicians, they all keep telling, uh, well, the record labels tell us since ages the future is streaming, and so what? What's in for me as an artist? What's in for me as an artist manager? Nothing so far. And I think to transform a streaming commodity, which is simply a service, into a platform where you are creating proximity between the artists and between the audiences is really the thing to go for. And we are currently entering into agreements with the top 20 um, institutions in the world. We have a signed contract with the Vienna Philharmonic. We have agreements with the Philadelphia Orchestra, San Francisco Symphony Orchestra, uh, uh, Czech Philharmonic, so really with all of them. And to, to kind of also educate them and tell them, look, here is your recording legacy. Use it, engage, build context, comment on it. So um, this, is, this may all sound very nice, but um, if I turn around and say, OK, but, but what does it mean for the business? Mm. Um, and here's what you earlier said, what the in investment thesis always was. So far, we have been growing via um, performance marketing. Mm -hmm. The other in investment was Liferando. So we grew so far like Liferando. But we have, in this space, a totally different way to scale, which is to grow B to B to C. So that means not only have a product for audiences, but also have a product for artists where they can promote their music to their fans. So they promote us locally, whereas we are promoting them globally. So this is a kind of the, uh, the, the, the big line here. All right. So I think our time is up. Um, yeah, I can only recommend download the Dajo app if you're interested in classical music. And um, yeah, talk to Till here at the conference. Thanks very much. Thanks.